So welcome to day six of the prototype build. And we're going to do some timing tests today. But before that, we're going to support the pedal a little bit. If you see it from the side, you can see when I put a lot of force, it's actually bending quite a lot. I calculated with that in the design. I was pretty sure it was going to bend. But now I feel it is bending a little bit too much. So we're going to add some material. So I'm cutting off some extra rectangular square tube and welding it on. And as you can see now, the pedal is not bending at all. Now I can almost put my whole body weight on it. Much better. I just learned something quite amazing about these uh, locking systems. And what's cool when we're at an event like this, we have so many smart people here in the audience. For example, Benny, who have told me something amazing. What is it you have found out? It's about the locking mechanism of the taper pushing, because we were losing some tightness on it and retightening it. You actually need to engage the inner circle, like this, it's in the technical drawing. You would bend one of those parts in, it's locked with the inner part, with the outer part, and then you don't lose any tightness. You see the blue part is bent, and the white part is not bent. So we're going to actually try that, we're going to bend this one. Now this part can't rotate if this part isn't rotating. Awesome, thank you so much, Benny, for uh, teaching me this. <laughs> Give it up for Benny. <laughs> First test ever, 80 BPM, with three weight discs and the largest pulling. So I'm not expecting great results, but it's important data. I become like a bird. <laughs> Do you want to close the door so we can not hear the marble machine song during the whole test? Yes. It's actually easier to accelerate now, Carlos, since we made it. Uh, I have more control now than yesterday. I'm behind. But here comes the problem, that when I'm accelerating, how would I be able to actually stop exactly at 80? I'm always going to overshoot and then undershoot. So I'm, I'm reaching, but now it's going to overshoot. Now I'm ahead. That's where the governor could help. Oh, we don't have it on right now. What's the sound? Something started to vibrate. So we, are, we have not really used the machine until today. So this is now when we quick get it. This is kind of a good image on why we need to lock these washers. This is not really how the bearing is supposed to look no. during operation. All the parts should stay with the bearing is the goal. So let's bend all three. OK, so we are going to rerun the first test of 80 BPM with all the five uh, cam locking systems locked properly. So nothing will come loose and vibrate, hopefully. So let's record a full test again. I felt already it was easier to control the tempo when the pedal was stiffer. 
which was pretty encouraging. It's even bending still here, so maybe we can make it even stiffer to make it even easier to control. It kind of makes sense because when I push down, all the energy goes straight into the flywheel instead of into the bending. Okay, I can, it can't lift me yet. Here I think it lifts me. Yeah. And this is on the lowest setting. So that's why the foot would not like to be crushed by the pedal. <laughs> okay. So I'm ramping up and trying to get the two clicks in sync. pretty good, but uh, I know that the flywheel is not strong enough at this setting because the deceleration and acceleration are too fast. There will also be a skill aspect to this. By practicing, it will go into muscle memory, and I will be able to play tighter and tighter. But I want a machine that helps me in the first place to make it easier to play tight, and then I can add skill and muscle memory on top of a very good setting. My feeling right now is that this is kind of ominous for this whole design. I thought at these lower levels it would be much easier to play tight. It feels like it was easier to play tight on the Marmachine X. Currently, a little bad omens for this whole design. <laughs> and this was what I expected, like the click is steady and I'm like a wave around it. And the wave is too fast for my liking. But that's exactly the data we're here to find out and I'm not going to make any guesses, we're going to analyze it properly when we have all the data. So we're on a really good way of finding the information we're after. So that's a success. Right now it feels like this is not going to work, but that's five days too early to tell. This is the last day of the event and we've been here in the workshop. So I wanted to show you around to get you a feel of what's been happening here. And there's a lot of cool small little projects that I wanted to show. So this is the beautiful street. And then we come in here into the main halls. So we have the Wintergatan sign up there, my old music box backdrop, two marble machines, and the updated Wintergatan Wednesday's RGB sign. So in this hall is, of course, the two marble machines. So we have the original one here, and LA is working, as always. We come into the center hall, and this is the makerspace. Hey Tobias, you built something really crazy, what is it? Yeah, uh, it's a Lego built um, glockenspiel player, so it plays a glockenspiel uh, only built with Lego bricks. So, yeah, it's like the robot in the middle and I put the instrument around the robot so it can play it. It's awesome, well done. <laughs> Thank you, thanks a lot. Here's a 3D printed violin that actually sounds great. Hi, I'm Neil, I'm from uh, Google, and I've uh, created a self-playing glockenspiel. 
Uh, here's a tune that you might recognize. It sounds great even without the bars. There's a Raspberry Pi on this side. It's got uh, 26 GPIO pins, and each one of them is attached to one solenoid. That's awesome. Thank you for making it, and thanks for being here. Thank you for the inspiration. My name is Dave. I'm a, a freelance uh, prototype designer, and this is the Aeon Time Machine. It's a machine that tells time. Basically, uses a couple of registration wheels and some registration fingers, and a Geneva mechanism right here. Um, and this will count up to 60 minutes, and then the hour hand will uh, get activated. And now for something really special. We have a custom-made PC that was actually made for me. Right, so indeed this is a PC specially made um, for Martin uh, together with Yannick, uh, Alex and Tynan. So if we, it's actually just a normal PC, but you know, outside is a very special one. So if you open it up, we can see there's a PC inside. Uh, and it's a normal one, except that we have a very special graphics card for all the best physics simulations you can do, a very high-end Ryzen processor, and most importantly, the names of the creators on the bottom. most uh, special feature about the computer is these gears are not aesthetic, they're functional. Even so, when the computer is working harder, the gears also spin faster. The reason we did that is because it looked cool and it was definitely not a feature creep. A huge thanks to Linus, uh, Alex, Tyne and, and Yannick uh, for all the help with the computer. And uh, I can't wait to see some simulations with it, Martin. So a huge thanks to Linus, Alex, Tyne and Yannick and Sebastian. So this was actually a collaboration with Linus Tech Tips YouTube channel. And this had to be one of the coolest custom computer I know of anywhere else. So, Thanks to the whole team and thanks to you for making it happen, Sebastian. My pleasure. It means a lot. Here's something pretty special. You took some parts from the Mar Machine X and did what? Yes, exactly. We took some uh, parts and did some uh, screens for uh, screen printing. It is completely crisp. So my mother has been here the whole meetup. How has it been? So fun, exciting, so fun, awesome. Uh, why? So many people here, so many young people with so many enthusiasm and uh, skills and everybody is so happy and the audience come here and they are very happy to come here. So, so much energy. Yeah, it's it's true. So, if they thank you, <laughs> if they ever do this event again next year, it has been. We talked in the beginning of the event that there is a kind of a negativity bias in all humans. If I would summarize this whole event, is that the people from this event has a kind of optimism, positivity bias. So instead of the negativity bias, they have an optimism bias. Wintergarten Meetup 2023 in Rudesheim has been an amazing success and I want to thank everyone that has volunteered from the Wintergarten community. The community just makes things happen by themselves and a lot of good feedback and design thoughts uh, from all the visitors have reached me during these intensive days. Hopefully this is going to be a yearly thing. Thanks to everyone in the community and thanks to uh, the whole Wendell family and Siegfried's Mechanical Music Museum for being so open and rock and roll and, and hosting us in all these beautiful spaces. Hopefully see you next year. RGB version of the Wintergatan Wednesday sign says it all really. So thank you so much for watching day six and see you tomorrow for day seven.